you welcome to another basic science class and we have a question here before we move right on to our topic today and the question is why do we need to protect the ecosystem why do we need to protect the ecosystem if you have been following a series on ecology we have looked at ecology itself and we also look at components of the ecosystem you would have understood what the ecosystem is by now but not to worry I'm going to just give a brief explanation why I would also encourage you to search for the video on component of the ecosystem for you to understand for you to have a deeper understanding of what we are learning here so why do we need to protect the ecosystem what what, what do we even mean by ecosystem when we're talking about ecosystem we're talking about the biotic factor and the abiotic factor in an environment and when i'm saying biotic this looks like a big english but or a big word or language whatever but if you had also seen the previous video before now you would understand better so biotic system when we talk about biotic we are talking about biotic i mean to say biotic we are talking about living organisms living organisms and that is biotic factors living organisms living factors in that environment and this consists of the plant the animal and microorganisms these are all living and when we're talking about the abiotic factor we are talking about the non-living the non-living the learn living factor of that environment and you're talking about the sun the air the atmosphere talking about the temperature and what are the soil these are just non-living they are not living but they have effect on the environment so why do we need to protect the ecosystem and i i could remember vividly that in the previous class we also considered the types of ecosystem and when we had the forest ecosystem the grassland ecosystem the desert ecosystem and also we have the freshwater ecosystem and we and the last but not the least was the marine ecosystem we looked at the various vegetations that were there that you can find there, the characteristics and the kind of animals that live in this various ecosystem so why do we need to protect this ecosystem if we don't protect them do they have any adverse effect you're going to know in the course of today's lesson why we need to protect the ecosystem that will lead us right on to our topic which is biodiversity and ecosystems biodiversity and ecosystem i i mentioned this biodiversity in the previous class and i said i'm going to explain extensively in the in the subsequent video and this was a video i was talking about this was a class i was talking about so biodiversity and ecosystem at the end of today's class you should be able to de define biodiversity then state the levels of biodiversity there are levels of biodiversity and discuss the importance of biodiversity and of course you should be able to understand why we need to protect the ecosystem so biodiversity refers to the variety of life forms found in a particular ecosystem region or the entire planet bio anywhere you come up, uh, uh, across the word bio it means life so biodiversity we are talking about different types variety of life forms that are found in a particular ecosystem so we are looking at the living part of the living factors of the ecosystem or on the entire of a particular region or the entire planet it encompasses the di diversity of species and do not forget that when we talk about species we're talking of of organism of same kind same kind species same kind of organisms genetic variation within species and the ra range of ecosystems present and when we're talking about genetic variation let me just give you a brief maybe insight into that when you look at cows you come across some cows and you see some are white some are black some are dotted some are they have patched colors within them some are white and black and they just have very different variation of color so this is impacted by their genetic by their gene so and the range of ecosystems present biodiversity is crucial for maintaining healthy ecosystems and plays a vital role in supporting life on earth so we want to look at levels 
of biodiversity levels of biodiversity we have species diversity and i told you that species is when you talk about species it means organisms of same kind same kind they are not you're not talking about you're not looking at goat and sheep now if you're looking at goats you're just looking at goats if you're looking at sheep you're looking at sheep if you're looking at humans you're looking at humans if you're looking at cashew trees or cashew plants you're looking strictly at cashew plants so that is organism of same kind that is species so species diversity refers to the number of different species present in a particular area it includes both the richness total number of species and evenness relative abundance of each species within a community so now we're looking at different species now not just one not just one type not just one species so different species we're looking at their evenness their distribution the total number of those species staying there and their distribution their abundance within a community higher species diversity generally indicates a more stable and resilient ecosystem and number two we're looking at is do not forget we're looking at types of biodiversity we are looking at genetic diversity we have looked at species diversity now we are in genetic diversity genetic diversity refers to the variety of genes within a species within a species it, re it refers to a variety of gene different type of genes that are available that are obtainable within that species it includes variation in dna sequences genetic traits and adaptations genetic diversity enhances the ability of species to adapt to changing environmental conditions resist diseases and survive threats and number three we have is ecosystem diversity ecosystem diversity ecosystem diversity refers to the variety of ecosystems or habitats within a region the, the different the variety the different ecosystem that you have within a region or the different habitats that you have within a region is refers to as ecosystem diversity it encompasses different types of forests grasslands west wetlands deserts coral reefs and other ecosystem if you had seen the previous video when we look at types of ecosystem i told you we have forest ecosystem grassland ecosystem we have desert ecosystem we have the the freshwater ecosystem and also the marine ecosystems so ecosystem diversity ensures that various ecological niches are occupied and in the in a, in the in this on the on the video that is ecology video i spoke about niches i told that told us that niches is the specific role a species plays in an environment so ecosystem eco, sorry ecosystem diversity ensures that various ecological niches are occupied different roles are occupied and this will help to promote stability nutrient cycle within the ecosystem and also resilience that is adaptation ability to adapt to that echo system so what are the importance of biodiversity is it important when we have a uh, ecosystem diversity and we have um, genetic diversity and we have species diversity what are the importance of this biodiversity so number one is ecosystem services biodiversity provides essential ecosystem services that are crucial for human well being so it is of important to the human race too so these services include air and water purification climate regulation pollination we're talking about pollination plants and um, insects help to pollinate our plants wind help also in 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 pollination so, so nutrient recycling soil fertility and flood control they contribute to human health food security and economic benefits number two is it supports food web importance of importance of of biodiversity number two it's it supports food webs in the first video on ecology i talked about food webs and i, I would, let me just throw my lights but you just need to see that video to understand what we're even talking about here you need to f see the ecology video and you also need to see the component of ecosystem video so we have food webs are the aggregates of food chains that is you have when you have many food chains put together you have your food web so food web is complex and food web is just a linear sequence of how energy is being transferred from 
uh, within the ecosystem, so different trophy level in the ecosystem. We have different organisms, different species that fill these trophy levels. And now they support food webs. So biodiversity supports food webs. And biodiversity is vital for maintaining complex food webs and ecological balance. Each species within a food web plays a specific role as either a producer, a consumer, or a decomposer. And if, when we talk about producer, that is strictly autotrophs. And these are plants or these are organisms that can produce their own food. And such organisms that can produce their food by their surface, the plants, algae, and some bacteria, they are referred to as autot autotrophs. And they produce their food either using sun, sun as the energy through the process called photosynthesis, or they use chemical to produce them energy and the consumer we have the primary consumer they are mostly herbivores they feed on i explained this in detail in the in, in the video components of ecosystem so this herbivores feed mainly on plants that is their source of food plants is their source of food so they feed on the producer so these are called primary consumer we have the secondary consumer we have the tertiary consumer and we also have the apex predator and this predator too they are also consumer they feed on other animals or other organisms to live Dis disruptions to biodiversity can lead to imbalances in populations affecting the entire ecosystem for example now in this food web that we have here and we have the, the plants, the producers and the composer, that is the plant, flowers, nuts, seed, fruit, insects. So these are just classified as producers. And then later on, you have your, your red beech, uh, your bed feed on this on these plants, or the squirrel feed on the seed, or your deer feed on the plants. All these are primary consumers. And further now, you, have, you, you see another trophy level of some other animals feeding on these on these primary consumers or on the secondary consumers and you have your tertiary consumer if anything should bridge the trophy any of this trophy level is going to affect another species in the long run so it's it's really to disruptions disruptions lead to imbalance and population of those especially when there is disruption in biodiversity is going to lead to imbalance in populations of other species and that's what we talked about keystone species in the first slide when we talk about ecology so some of these keystone species the, you you can't do without them they are present or absence however um, they have a significant impact on other species we also have medicine and research biodiversity is a valuable source of medicinal compounds and potential breakthroughs in scientific research many pharmaceuticals including antibiotics painkillers and anti-cancer drugs are derived from natural compounds found in plants animals and microorganisms so you can see that biodiversity has a role to play in medicine and research number four is aesthetics and cultural value aesthetics and cultural value biodiversity contributes to the beauty and aesthetics of a natural environment it holds cultural significance for indigenous communities and provides recreational and educational opportunities for such communities that have the same opportunity to house this aesthetic aesthetic or cultural um, values so biodiversity plays a role in this some of us love to visit coral reefs or love to just visit places where you see different types of um, um maybe animals and the rest so it has produced it, it has served as a recreational it has played a recreational role and also a source of education education or serve as education opportunities educational opportunities for us the next is Cons conserving biodiversity. You know, I the, the our initial question was, why do we need to protect the ecosystem? So we are con conserving biodiversity. The conserv conservation of biodiversity is critical to maintain ecosystem health and ensure the sustainability of our planet. Stru so if we are going to maintain 
the ecosystem adds that is if i'm going to, going to maintain balance in the ecosystem and to en ensure the sustainability of our planet we cannot joke with conserving biodiversity so what are the strategies that we can use to conserve biodiversity number one is protecting habitats and ecosystem from degradation and destruction so we should protect our habitats maybe the forest habitats or the grassland habitats or whatever habitat we should protect them protect the ecosystem in that environment uh, from degradation and also from destruction number two is implementing sustainable practices in agriculture forestry and in fishery so we should implement sustainable practices in agriculture in forestry and fishery number three is managing protected areas and promoting wildlife conservation this is how we can protect our ecosystem so we manage where, where we are not supposed to go for hunting where we're not supposed to hunt don't go there to hunt don't encourage somebody else to go there to hunt that is how we can promote and protect our ecosystem managing protected areas and promoting wildlife conservation i know in this side or in this part of the world whenever you come across there was a time i think sometimes ago in which uh, i think that should be by inside i think and the, a whale swim to the to the to the shore and it was caught by the before you know it within some certain days the whale is down they ate it you know they, they begin to butcher it and they began to butcher it i mean to say and everybody started eating but in developed countries they help the whale they push it back into the into the sea to protect it to conserve it and for it push it back into the ocean and so that it can can we they can they can have more of it so that it won't go into extinction so managing protected areas and promoting wildlife conservation the number the next is raising awareness and education about the value of biodiversity and the need for conservation we should raise awareness and ed educate others about the value of biodiversity we need these things in our environment we need these animals we need these plants whether they are harmful or not we need them they are they are occupying a specific niche in the ecosystem there that means they are playing a specific role that are indispensable that without them when we lose them is going to affect the balance in the ecosystem the next is promoting sustainable development practices that consider the impact on biodiversity so very quickly let's look at the human impact on ecosystem what is our impact human impact and we're looking at both positive and negative impact on the ecosystem of human on the eco system human activities have a significant impact on ecosystems worldwide often leading to negative often leading to negative consequences for biodiversity and the overall health that is overall balance of the eco system so what are the major ways in which human activities affect ecosystems major ways in which human activity our activities affect the eco system number one is habitat destruction Human activities such as deforestation, urbanization, and conversion of natural habitats for agricultural or infrastructure results in loss and fragmentation of habitats. For example, deforestation is the felling of trees. That is, you just enter into the forest and you begin to cut down trees, either for urbanization purposes, that is, maybe trying to build, make that place, build a... Um, so companies on, on that land and the rest and conversion of natural habitats for agricultural or infrastructure purpose they result in loss and fragmentation of our of the habitat and this will also have impact on the species that stays in that particular habitat so it has destroyed their habitat displacing them and in the long run some of these species can become prey to other species that maybe they're, they're trying to get and to build another habitat they can become prey or in the process lost their life so they, they will go out of extinction so then this leads to the displacement and extinction of species that rely on this habitat for survival. An example is the clearing of tropical rainforest for palm oil plantation. It destroys habitat of numerous species, including orangutans and tigers, pushing them closer to extinction. You know that the home of tigers is the rainforest tropical rainforest so when you destroy this habitat if you push them out of their um, habitat where they survive where they live and it can lead to their extinction 
Number two is pollution. That we are looking at human impact on the ecosystem. Human impact on the ecosystem. Number two is pollution. Pollution from industrial activities, agriculture, and improper waste management can contaminate air, water, and soil in ecosystems. Pollutants can harm and kill plants, animals, and microorganisms, disrupting the balance of the eco system i'm sorry example the release of pollutants into rivers and oceans from factories and agricultural runoff can lead to water pollution and you know when these pollutants are, are introduced into the water bodies it will kill some aquatic organisms causing imbalance in aquatic ecosystem one of our classes i remember talking about how get taken over when you release some pollutants into the water you'll see that um some kind of um organisms get get to outgrow other species like algae covering the face of the water and reducing the level of oxygen in that water and animals that depend or plant or uh, the organisms that depend on organisms in such water cannot survive so they die in the process they die in the process causing an imbalance in that aquatic ecosystem number three is climate change Climate change, don't forget we're looking at the human impact on the ecosystem. Climate change, human induced climate change. This is it, this is not uh, it's human induced climate change, primarily driven by the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation, alter temperature and precipitation patterns, leading to habitat shifts and species range contractions or expansion. So human induced climate change can lead to the loss of some species or leading to habitat shifts because once um, the environment where they live their ecosystem is affected they will have to move from that habitat to look for another suitable habitat where they can live so it can either lead to extinction contraction or expansion so these changes can disrupt the delicate relationship between species and affect their ability to survive and reproduce and when these things are affected it can lead to those species going into extinction an example is rising global temperatures and uh, and changing rainfall patterns due to climate change threaten coral reefs which are sensitive to changes in water temperature and acidity this endangers the biodiversity and ecological functions of this valuable eco system so the next is over exploitation Do not forget we're looking at the human human impact on the ecosystem over as harvesting of natural resources including fishing hunting and logging and when i'm talking about logging that is felling of woods in the forest that is in a way deforestation it can deplete populations of species beyond their ability to recover for example if we are uh, just and going to a particular river or ocean to catch fish and catch fish and we're not giving it time for it to recover in the long run we're going to deplete their population the population of such species of such fishes and they might not be able to recover which might lead to their extinction so this will also disrupt food webs reduce biodiversity and threaten the survival of many species Overfishing in marine ecosystems can lead to the depletion of certain fish populations, affecting not only the target origin or species, but also other organisms in the food chain. That is, other organisms that depend on such fish, like the whale. So, whale depends on eating fish, and um, the shark depends. So, it's going to affect them in the long run on the food chain. So, what to look at how to encourage conservation and also reduce ecological footprints number one is reduce resource consumption we can conserve resources by practicing energy and water conservation reducing waste and reusing or recycling material number two is support sustainable practices promote the use of sustainable agricultural practices responsible fishing and ethical consumer choices that support sustainable industry and products instead of consuming a particular product that we know that it can go into extinction we can we can um, make ethical consumer choices and also responsible fishing that means we don't fish all year round we have some specific 
period that is allocated for fishing and a specific period that is allocated for the for the for for, for the environment for the ecosystem to to recover itself and to replenish itself no, the next is number three is preserve and restore habitat in places in which habitat has been lost due to maybe urbanization or infrastructure and the rest and we lost the habitat we can replant those habitats we can participate in community projects focused on preserving and restoring local habitats such as tree planting initiatives and wetland restoration programs number four is race awareness raise awareness we can educate others about the importance of biodiversity and now you already know that if we don't uh, if we don't protect our environment or our ecosystem or the uh, biodiversity it has a negative impact so you can educate others raise awareness organize awareness campaigns create educational materials or engage in environmental advocacy then let's look at strategies for environmental conservation what are the strategies that we can use to conserve our environment? Number one is sustainable resource use. Sustainable resource use. Promote sustainable practices in resource extraction, agriculture, and energy production. So this includes reducing reliance on non-renewable resources. In one of our previous videos, that is renewable and non-renewable resources. If you have not seen this video, please quickly go now and check for it. That's the topic, renewable and non-renewable resources. I explained in detail what non-renewable resources are and what renewable energy resources are. So renewable resources are resources that can replenish itself within a short period of time. Why not renewable resources are resources that cannot replenish themselves? For example, example of renewable resources are the fishes in the oceans. So they, you don't need to keep tab on them, but you, they can replenish themselves within a short period of time. But if we overuse them, overexploitation can make us so lack some of these resources. Although they can still replenish themselves, you have the sun. Is renewable while renew non renewable are resources that can finish that means they, are, they, they cannot replenish themselves within a short period of time we have a full self fuel from where we get our petroleum from and a byproduct and um, and um, petroleum product and a byproduct of some of these petroleum products are uh, plastic so these are non renewable resources so we can reduce our reliance on non renewable resources implement responsible fishing and logging practices for example this Implementing responsible fishing is giving people time to fish and season which, which they cannot fish. So to, to help replenish that echo system and logging practices, that means you don't just enter the forest anyhow and fell any wood. You're going to wait for the right time and make sure that the trees are right, they are mature enough for harvest. The next is waste reduction and recycling. Encourage waste reduction and recycling practices to minimize the amount of waste sent to landfills. By the time you get some land landfills, fields, you're going to find lots of plastics there. Some junkyards, you find lots of plastics there. And they are just occupying everywhere, leading to pollution and the rest. So you can, re instead of producing more plastics we can reuse this plastic plastic recycle them to minimize to minimize waste um, waste production so this can include reducing single use items promoting composting and recycling materials such as paper plastic glass and metals Number three is conservation of endangered species. There are some species that are about to go into extinctions. We call this one endangered species. They are not yet out of extinction, but they are about to. So we can conserve them, support effort to conserve endangered species by protecting their habitat. We don't just enter into their habitat and destroy their habitat. We already know that these are endangered species. So we protect their habitat, implement breeding and reintroduction programs, and combating illegal wildlife trade so number four is habitat restoration habitat restoration engage in habitat restoration projects to improve degraded ecosystems this can invo involve planting native vegetation that is reintroduction of some habitat that have been destroyed so you can reintroduce those native vegetation there restore wetlands and remove invasive species to promote the recovery of natural habitats and here uh, bio 
diversity. So we're going to look at examples of successful conservation projects or initiatives. There were some uh, environments or some ecosystems that, that have been destroyed, disrupted or destroyed in time part. And there was some conservation that were done and projects that were carried out to restore those ecosystems. So let's look at example. Number one is the reintroduction of the gray wolf in Yellowstone National Park. So gray wolf was almost going out of extinction. So they reintroduced it into National Park. So it restored balance to the ecosystem and improved biodiversity. The next is establishment of marine protected areas, such as the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park in Australia to protect coral reefs and marine biodiversity. Also, we have the conservation efforts to protect endangered species like the giant panda. Giant panda was an endangered species some time ago, and they were almost going out of extinction, but they were, there were some conservation efforts that were put in place, and now it led to their increase in population, and they are no longer endangered species. Then the next is reforestation projects such as the Great Green Wall in Africa aimed at combating desertification and restoring degraded land. These are all examples of reintroductions of ecosystems where they have been lost in time past. So these examples highlight the power of conservation efforts and demonstrate that positive change is possible when we come together to protect and restore ecosystems. So we have come to the end of today's topic. And, you know, we, we have looked at the biodiversity and ecosystem. And in the process, we look, you know what biodiversity are, the types of biodiversity and conservation of biodiversity and why we need to protect the ecosystem. So very quickly, we're going to look at some questions. We're going to look at just a question, just one question. From the Besser app, I expect you to go over the, the questions, the remaining questions, and try to at and attempt them yourself. This will help you to know if you truly understood what you were taught taught in this class. And we are still looking at we are still under the topic of uh, the topic ecology. So you are still going to click on ecology. And as I said, I'm just going to pick a question, and which is. Forest is conserved through the following except forest is conserved through the following except a afforestation b deforestation c education d legislation e reforestation afforestation is in relation of forest where there was no forest at all and deforestation you know is the destruction of forest so is education can you conserve forest through education can you by educating people by creating awareness legislation by putting in some laws that helps to regulate the forest use can you conserve forest then reforestation mm. is the reintroduction of forest where forest has been lost so what is the right answer forest is conserved through the following except b deforestation that is you destroying forest so you cannot conserve forest by deforesting by cutting them off it is either by afforestation by educating people creating awareness legislation putting in laws that guides the forest and reforestation so the right answer there is deforestation i expect you to check for other questions and attempt them see you in the next class thank you